So welcome, this is the final uh, video lecture of the uh, advanced inferring class in, in uh, knowledge and data. This one is about summaries, mistakes and further steps, because as you can imagine, with uh, this um, rather complex uh, modeling language OWL, you can uh, imagine that there are quite some mistakes and many of those mistakes that I predict that you will make are relatively common mistakes. So we try to tell you about those mistakes so maybe you can avoid them uh, or at least uh, when you see that when you make them you can see those mistakes and try to to solve those problems that uh, you get then so um, one of the biggest mistakes is that um, you really make an ontological commitment that is too strong so you have to be aware that every axiom that you write down uh, restricts all the possible interpretations of the domain. So each statement in the ontology makes a commitment to how the world is seen given your, uh, your model. And the overcommitment means that the ontology makes too strong statements which makes things that you would like to say impossible. You have to remember that ontologies live in an open and distributed world. So object-oriented models are in a closed world. You know everything. So the danger of overcommitment is much larger in ontologies because the more things you say about the specific world, there is always a chance that things do not adhere to your worldview. So the rule of thumb is really that you choose a minimal ontological commitment that is needed for your application while still keeping as much as is needed for your specific application. So I will take uh, two examples uh, uh, to show you what, what typical mistakes are. One is in particular the domain range versus class restrictions. And I think uh, you will hopefully better understand what I mean. So if you look at the domain and range, then this is a very, very strong restriction on the domain of a property. So if we say that uh, wine has a color and so we want to use the property a color to, to, to describe the color of uh, wine. So um, you would be able to claim that wine has a color, so therefore the property has color, should have the domain wine. So then you get very useful things like uh, something has a color um, uh, is of domain wine, plus the information that a Bordeaux 2015 has a color red, that you can then conclude that the example Bordeaux 2015 uh, is of type wine. So that's quite nice, but the price obviously that you pay is whenever you see something different like a Ferrari with the color red, that given the same assumption on the domain of the has color relation, that now your Ferrari also becomes a wine using standard RDF inference. And that's obviously an overcommitment because your Ferrari shouldn't be a wine. Your Ferrari should still be possibly something else than a wine. So instead of using this very powerful, uh, this overcommitment of claiming that everything that has a color should have the domain wine, that you can apply has color only to objects of the wine property, you can restrict locally the domain of the has color class by uh, writing a uh, class restriction. So basically what you say is that everything that is a wine has to be a subclass of this class here and this class is again a restriction type which is the restriction on the has color property and what it says is that every value uh, from this has color property is a color and this basically says the same thing but now it's restricted only to the objects that are of the type y here's another typical mistake or a thing to, to really be careful about and that is the equivalence class, so the necessary and sufficient conditions in relation with the universal quantification. So basically, if you define a class A to be the class of things where everything that's in a P relation has the value B, then this basically means that if you find something that is related to an object of the A class, namely in this case, B is related via P with A and A is of type capital A, then this automatically means that B is of type B because of this universal quantification. Again, this is an overcommitment that is not really what you want to derive in many, many cases. 
So you have to be very, very careful when you use equivalent classes in combination with all value combinations. A third type of mistake is the one of the complement. The complement is not the same as um, the the um, uh, that two things that is joined. So you would like to say that nothing can be both a male person and a female person. So that would mean that the two things that is joined. But what you easily do is that you say the one is the opposite of the other. So it's the complement. This is not the case because there are things that are not male persons, but not necessarily female persons. So basically what you say with this uh, um, male person is complement of female person is that everything that is not a male person would be a female person. And this is of course not true. So the better way of doing this is that you define the superclass person and you define the superclass as a disjoint union of two classes, namely the male persons and the female persons. And this is in principle exactly what you want to say. Typical protege mistake is that you think you would like to, things should follow, and the only thing you've done is that you've forgotten to switch on the reasoner. Make sure that you switch on your reasoner all the time, because this can be very confusing. Another typical mistake in protege is that you save your files, um, that you do not save the files in the right way. Use a TTL extension that we have used in the uh, lectures to work with because this is a format that we are going to to use later in, in other applications and that is the sort of one of the standards. Let me give you some tips before we stop with this uh, uh, module of uh, how to build a good ontology because this is also something that one should really uh, learn properly and we'll see a bit more next week. Um, so next week there will be, on the one hand, how to combine ontologies and how to combine data, um, but there will be also a little bit more methodology on how to build a proper ontology. So here's what you should do, and let me start with uh, recommending you to think about an ontology that you want to build that you might also find interesting to work on later for your final assignment. So think of something that is a little bit more exciting than uh, uh, cats and dogs. Now, maybe even a cat and dog can be very interesting for your final assignment, but think a little bit more about what kind of web application using data might be interesting for you to continue to, to, to work on in the, for the final assignment. Uh, then you make a list of classes, properties, and instances that you plan to use. Define then each class as follows. Specify the necessary and sufficient conditions using owl some values from and owl has value restrictions. So this is really something you can follow one by one. After that, you specify additional necessary conditions using any type of restrictions. Then try to think of the, the different ways that the, the, the individuals, how you could still instantiate them in a, in a valid way. So basically think of which models would you still consider to be valid according to your specification of the world. Then use disjointness and complement, particular complement only very sparingly, because that is um, uh, really a source of, uh, uh, of, of, of uh, mistakes. Do not use domain and ranges if it can be avoided. So they might be very useful for generic uh, uh, classes on, on, the, on the modeling of the data, but to model a domain, this is really too, this is overcommitment and you will hardly find many uh, properties that you can really uh, 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 give a domain and range restriction. And test whether your classes are really work by given uh, test instances and test whether what, what happens is really what you, you think it, it should happen. So think of the example with the Nobel Prize winners, test out whether you would expect someone to be a Nobel Prize winner um, and whether you're a reasoner and whether your model really makes this person a Nobel Prize winner in this example. So. Here's the summary. Uh, the web of data, data in general, if you want to publish it for reuse, is really meaningless in the sense that it doesn't really contain information unless you have knowledge. And if you want to publish on the web, you really need formal knowledge, formal semantics. Um, 
RDF schema is too inexpressive and um, therefore people have been looking for languages that are as expressive as possible with good computational properties. So um, um, that's one of the features of OWL that it comes with a toolkit like uh, Palette uh, for Protégé or Stardog or the web that calculate really all the logical consequences, all the uh, in inferred things um, from an ontology so that you can automatically calculate and reason with all the consequences of your ontology that you have built. There is a point uh, that the open world assumption can be utterly confusing. So the fact that things that are not stated could be either true or false um, is really something you have to take to be aware of all the time. And, and this is one of the most common causes for mistakes. And the ultimate goal of uh, building a, an ontology is that you, you really try to do minimal ontological commitment with maximum coverage of the domain. So you want to be able to say as many things as possible and to really um, be able to solve your problems without specifying too much what the properties of your uh, classes and instances and properties would be. So the rest of this module will now be hands-on. And the best thing to start with is a, a, a tutorial that Rinke has uh, made or a, a screencast in which he shows how you can build your first ontology in uh, Stardog. So first you need to install Stardog. It's another thing that is possible to do. It's a bit painful probably, but uh, you, I'm sure you will manage if you start early enough. Then install, Star, uh, in, in, install Protégé and uh, look at this uh, screencast from uh, Rinke and that should get you going for the beginning.